Hi guys, Simuk here. This game is absolutely fantastic. I've been waiting so long for it to come out. They didn't send me a key and I like it so much I bought it. And I don't buy keys because I never get to play games. All I do is work. But uh, this one I just had to buy. I couldn't not. I couldn't not do it. I just find it so so fun. I mean it basically feels like a, a mobile game, but it's done so well so well that it just works on a pc oh look at this we've got soviet union china and japan added to the list now we got nasa i think we're going to go esa customize agency customize this agency you'll be able to change the name and flag of the agency as well as their traits base name and starting diplomatic relationships Oh, what a shame. I thought I could upload my own. Oh, that's something they've got to add. I've got to be able to upload my own stuff. Okay, we'll pick this one for now. Let's we'll call it Sim UK. Let's, let's not get too technical. Let's keep it nice and simple. Europe spaceport, yes, yes. Randomize, randomize, randomize. That looks good. Pioneer, a balanced experience. Missions will provide a challenge and other space agencies will be competitive. Veteran, a more demanding challenge for experienced players. Missions are tough, and other space agencies will be extremely competitive. Let's go Pioneer for now. I haven't played since the demo, so I'm very much learning as I go right now. Welcome, Director. You are entrusted with guiding our agency through this dawning space age and far beyond. Make use of our diplomatic expertise to promote international cooperation and scientific innovation, and place our agency at the forefront of humanity's voyage into space. Only by working together can we realise feats long thought impossible. With your leadership, we will uncover the mysteries of the solar system and perhaps, one day, make humans a multi-planetary species. Bon chance, Director. Nice. The solar system screen is your gateway to the various aspects involving in involved in running your agency such as accessing the research and base screens, selecting planets to discover available missions, and viewing recent and upcoming events. Your current tutorial objectives are tracked here. Completing these tasks is a great way to get your agency up and running. Your first objective is a crucial first step for any new space agency, constructing and launching an experimental sounding rocket to test and improve your booster technology. Selecting a planetary body in the solar system screen will display a list of missions associated with that body. Highlight Earth and then press I see I, I had to close the tutorial first. The mission select screen displays all missions belonging to the selected planetary body. Details of the currently selected mission can be seen here, such as the length of the mission and the rewards on offer. There are two types of mission milestones and requests. Ah, there are two types of mission milestones and requests. Milestone missions are important for advancing your space program and will be contested by other agencies. They will often require additional research. Request missions will become available as your agency completes milestone missions and can be a valuable way of boosting your support and science. Request missions don't require additional research, but each is only available for a limited time. Research required to unlock the currently selected mission will be listed here. Note that all required research has already been completed for test launch. All of the space agencies will be racing to complete milestone missions first. Doing so will result in increased support for your agency. 
Here you can track the progress of the five agencies in regards to the currently selected mission. Once you're ready, select Plan Mission to start planning the test launch mission. The mission plan includes each stage necessary to take a mission from the drawing board and up into space. Note that each mission plan takes up one mission slot. You can unlock additional slots by constructing mission control buildings. The test launch has no payload, so you can get straight to designing the launch vehicle. On this screen you'll be able to select previous vehicle designs or choose to start a new design. For the test launch only sounding rockets can be selected. This is the vehicle designer where you'll be able to design a vehicle for your mission. A vehicle is made up of a booster and an upper stage. The booster must be able to carry the upper stage, whilst the upper stage must be able to carry the payload. Note that for a test launch, only the sounding rocket may be selected and there is no payload. Displayed here are the vehicle stats, where you can check the booster has enough capacity to carry the upper stage, and the vehicle can reach the minimum distance required by the mission. Note that the launch pad requirement is not currently met. The sounding rocket requires a small launch pad. You can still design and build a vehicle without that, without the required launch pad, but will need to build the launch pad in order to launch the vehicle. Launch reliability is a key stat that determines the chance of the vehicle launching without error. As an experimental vehicle, the sounding rocket has a very low... However, it will gain a large amount of whatever that is, per launch, even if it blows up. Okay, cool. The sounding rocket is a valid design for this mission, so now can be confirmed. Once the vehicle has been constructed, you'll receive a construction report from your engineers. This will often include traits that may affect how you approach the next stage of the mission plan. If you have the necessary funds, you can start constructing the vehicle. This can take several months. Once the vehicle is completed, you'll be able to move onto the final stage of the mission plan and set a launch date. So we've, we've got just enough. Your engineers will begin construction immediately. Marmaduke will be completed on March 1957, two months. Now that the sounding rocket is constructing, it's time to build a launch pad capable of launching it. The first step is to complete the appropriate small launch pad research. Various screens crucial to running your agency can be accessed here. When you're ready, Select the research icon to access the research screen. The research screen is where you can research new technology vital to progressing your space program. The screen is split into three research trees, missions, buildings and vehicles. This is the mission tree, which contains the research necessary to unlock new missions and their respective payloads. Each tree is made up of nodes that represent certain technologies or areas of research. These nodes will often require the completion of other nodes before they can be researched. For example, the mission research arti artificial satellite must be completed before the payload research beneath can be started. Each research node requires a certain amount of science to complete and can be earned via missions and buildings. Note that you can select a node to view more details on that research. Each research tree is split into eras, which represent the techn technological age. Reaching a new era on any tree will unlock new planetary bodies in the solar system screen. Completing all the available research in a single era on a tree will grant a powerful reward. When you're ready, 
Select the buildings tree in order to find the small launch pad research. The buildings tree is key to expanding your base and the capabilities of your agency. To be able to launch your first mission, you need to research the small launch pad. Select the small launch pad node to view its details and press that to set it as the active research. So it's going to cost 50,000. Build time is one month. It's an essential service structure for launch vehicles, allowing maintenance work and providing data about the vehicle ahead of the launch. I'm not sure I have enough money. So I can research it for free. And then it looks like we're earning 51,000 per month. So hopefully, in a month's time, when it's built, we'll have enough. Here you can keep track of the resources vital to running your agency. Coin, funds, science and support. Support is primarily earned from completing missions. Earning support is key to reaching higher funding tiers which will increase your monthly funds income. Nice. Coin is required for constructing vehicles, buildings and many other key aspects of your space program. Science is earned from missions and certain buildings and is crucial to conducting research. The more science you collect, the faster you'll be able to unlock new technology. Upcoming events related to your agency will be shown here, along with the number of months before they occur. Past events will appear here, including notable news related to other space agencies. Keep an eye on these events to see what the other agencies are up to. Pressing next month will advance time by one month. Next event will advance time until the next important event. Press either of these when you're ready to continue. The small launch pad research is complete. Okay. Once a new building has been unlocked via research, it can be constructed in your base. Access in the base screen. To start construction of the small launch pad, you need to visit the base screen. Oh, this looks much better than it did before. Nice. Expanding your base is vital to increasing your agency's launch capabilities and much more besides. On this screen, you'll be able to construct new buildings that you've researched, move or demolish existing buildings and clear obstructions to create more space. You can use Q and E to rotate the screen and that to zoom in and out. As you've now researched the small launch pad, you'll be able to construct it in your base as long as you have the required coin, which we do. Here you'll be able to see all the buildings you've unlocked so far. Each building has a unique effect, many of which will be crucial to improving your agency. Buildings also have a build cost and upkeep. You need to be able to afford both in order to construct the building. You'll only be able to construct one of, one of most buildings, but some can have their buildings limit increased via further research. To construct the small launch pad, select it from the list here, then select build. If you can't afford it, wait a month or two until you can. Small launch pad. Build. A new building can be placed wherever there is sufficient space. Building on top of removable obstructions is possible as long as you can afford the additional cost of removing the obstruction. You can rotate the building using Z and X. Each building has potential positive and negative agency effects determined by the buildings it's placed next to. Try placing this one alongside different buildings to compare effects. Place, plan your base layouts carefully to get the most out of positive adjacent effects, but remember you can always move your buildings later. So, double positive. Why is that a negative? So, okay, so that's the perfect spot. See the plus sign, minus sign, 
Okay. I like that. That is so much better than it was in the demo. Your small launch pad is now constructing. Once it's completed, you'll be able to launch your first rocket. Fab. Now that the previous research is complete, you'll need to select a new one. A good early choice is the artificial satellite mission, which will allow your agency to start working towards putting its first payload into orbit, a major milestone in space exploration. Splendid. The vehicle's tree contains the technologies required to unlock bigger and better launch vehicles. As your agency develops increasingly advanced payloads, so too must your booster technology improve. For each mission, you'll need a vehicle capable of carrying the payload to its destination. Vehicle research nodes are divided by their type. Most vehicles used in missions will require a booster and upper stage research here. Later on, you'll be able to research supplementary boosters to make your launch vehicles even more powerful. This is so cool. Spacepedia. Welcome to the Spacepedia. The Spacepedia is your repository of space exploration knowledge. Play the game to unlock more articles. We'll come back to that. Next event. The small launch pad is complete. And so too is our first rocket, Marmaduke. Our engineers have reported that launch vehicle construction completed without any notable issues, no effect. Next, launch, launch preparations. The final stage in the mission plan involves assigning crew, deciding on a training program, and setting the launch date. As this is an uncrewed mission, no crew need to be assigned. Training is also locked for now until the appropriate buildings are constructed in your base. All that remains is to set the all-important launch date for the mission. Select the launch date button to get started. On the calendar screen you'll be able to set a launch date for your mission. Each month represents a launch window. There are three types of launch window, optimal, suboptimal and invalid. Optimal windows are ideal launch dates. Suboptimal windows carry a launch reliability penalty but can be worth risking in order to launch your mission earlier. You cannot launch on an invalid window. For milestone missions you can view the progress of other agencies for the current mission here. You'll also be able to see their schedule launches in the calendar. Be sure to schedule your launch before those of other agencies if you want to beat them to the milestone. Wow, that spins through real fast. So they're not planning on launching at all, I guess. Optimal launch date. Let's select that date then. With the launch date set, the final step is to confirm this stage. The mission operations team will begin preparations for the launch. The test launch mission will launch on April 1957. 1957 even, one month from now.
with the launch date set for your test time. Let's test launch. Now all that remains is to advance time until the launch month. Launch preparations, 25%. Here we go. I love this. They have done this so well. Let's do it. Two five. System damage. Got 25. Oh, we lost 25 uh, science points for that. Hey, nice. Hundred and twenty five. Uh, what do they call this? Support points and 187 for one month in science. Congratulations on completing your first tutorial objective. Your test launch was a resounding success, granting your agency valuable support and science. The next tutorial objective involves achieving a crucial milestone for your space agency, placing your first artificial satellite into orbit. Such a noteworthy mission is bound to grant valuable science as well as support from a rapt public. The first step in this new endeavour is to complete the required research, the artificial satellite mission and its mission payload. Visit the research screen to start the necessary research. Wait, wait, wait. What did it want me to build? <laughs> Research the artificial satellite. Research. Artificial satellite. We've already started it. Is there anything else I'm supposed to be doing? Research mission payload. Yeah, I can't do it yet. Okay. I think... I think we should think about... Everything's locked. Okay, scratch that plan. Let's go to the next event. An essential first step in any space program. Artificial satellite research is complete. And we've reached era one, dawn of spaceflight. As rocket technology advances, so does the prospect of exploring beyond the confines of our planet. Yet the public continues to question whether the fledgling agencies can overcome the dangers of spaceflight. We've unlocked the moon, baby. By reaching the first era, we've unlocked the moon. The moon can now be selected in the solar system screen, where a list of missions to the moon will be shown. Reaching future areas will unlock more planets in the solar system. 
You can navigate quickly between planetary bodies using Q and E. Oh yeah. Milestone missions have two research requirements. The mission profile and mission payload. Once these have been completed, you can begin planning the mission. So lunar orbit and pioneer. Understood. Recommended research may also be listed here. These are vehicle parts that may prove useful when designing the launch vehicle for the mission. Note that this research is not required to start the mission plan. All four of these then. And we have quite a lot of science, so maybe we can. Maybe we can't. Unavailable, because we got to do these first. Understood. Ah. I don't want to change my research. I can only research one thing at a time. So let's start with the booster. Work our way up. Okay. The Emerald research is complete. A small, early liquid fuel rocket based on earlier sounding rocket designs. I should have done that the last time. I forgot to do it. This says change research. You are kidding me. I can't research this and this. I can only research one thing at a time. That's pretty harsh. Build a mission vehicle. Okay. How do I do that again? Request missions are a great, great way to supplement your agency's resources, especially as they don't require any further research. It's just a free mission slot. Each request mission is only available for a set amount of time and unlike milestone missions can only be attempted once. The more milestones you complete, the more request missions will become available. Test launch, atmospheric sampling. Let's plan this mission. Select a vehicle. Build a sounding rocket. Now that you have a booster selected, it's time to select an upper stage capable of carrying the payload. There is no payload, right? 40% launch reliability. 80,000, it will take two months. Let's go, Sublime. small cylindrical satellite carrying basic x-ray and cosmic ray detectors. ESRO 2B research completed. Now that the artificial satellite mission and payload are researched, you can start the mission plan. Select Earth to find the mission, but note that you'll need a free mission slot in order to start a new mission plan. Really? You've completed the required research for this mission. I have 
no mission slots available. That's a tad frustrating. month. So a second rocket. 5% launch reliability. Most milestones will include a payload, the satellite or spacecraft you're sending into space. The first stage of the mission plan will be to design and, con and construct the payload. We don't need that for this because we're doing atmospheric sampling. Invalid launch date, suboptimal, optimal, November. Oh, really? Okay. NASA completed their second test launch. So we're behind already. The Topaz research is completed. Okay, gonna need booster aglog, glow, aglow. Here we go. Fantastic. That's a bit more like it. Nice. Okay, they're launching in eight months, so we need to be real quick here. We need to launch launch an official satellite. Let's plan the mission. That's the payload. It's a standard payload. The mission payload will be carried out by your launch vehicle into space and used in mission tasks that occur after launch. Payload rating is an overall rating based on the payloads modules. More details on the payloads modules and the mission tasks can be found by clicking on the more info button below. Payload reliability is a key payload stat. It, the engineer points, or whatever they're called, determines the chance that our payload modules will operate without errors during the mission task. A higher rating of that will generally make mission tasks easier to complete but is sometimes worth sacrificing for better modules or a cheaper build cost. Note that the payload's mass determines the launch vehicle required for the mission. The capacity of the vehicle's upper stage must be large enough to carry the payload's mass. Each mission payload has available variants which can be used to further customize the payload for your current mission. Each variant has strengths and weaknesses compared to the standard version of the payload. Improves comms, reduces build cost, increases power. So this is the most reliable, 65, but this one also is 65, so that's increased power, and that's just sta excuse me, standard. But that's an extra 50,000. We can afford it. We can afford it. Uh, 
Let's just go standard, I think. Payload modules are used to generate the resources required to complete task objectives in the mission. The higher the module rating, the more of its associated resource it will generate. For example, a short-range comms module with a high rating will generate more communication points. So that's not going to benefit us at all, but that could. That could be more, but that's the most beneficial there. So how much is that? That's also 100,000. Slightly less reliability. Let's go for that. Like they do with vehicles, your engineers will deliver a construction report on the payload once it's completed. This can include traits that may affect your choice of vehicle design in the next stage. Once you have the necessary funds, you can start construction of the payload. Construction can take several months. Two months. We need to be researching something. All right, what do we have here? 350 kilograms, 500 kilograms. That's also 500 kilograms. Max distance to the moon, build time is three, three months. Max distance, Earth orbit only. So I think we're going for this one. What do we got here? Quicker to build, slightly less reliability, slightly less capacity. So we may have researched the wrong one there, but we definitely, I think, want to go for this one. Let's hope I'm right. Artificial satellite. Why is build vehicle locked? So I'm going to have to wait for two months to see Jupiter research completed. So if we come up here to missions, I'd really like to do the lunar orbit. Budget review, 1958. Your agency's performance over the last 12 months has been reviewed and your budget has been adjusted accordingly. We now get 77,000 per month and the next tier is 102. Fantastic. There she is. The artificial satellite payload is complete. So let's select a vehicle. I can't select a pre-existing design yet. Okay. To launch this mission, you'll need a vehicle capable of carrying a payload to its destination. The vehicle is made up of a booster and an upper stage. Select upper stage to get started. Here you'll find all the upper stages presently available to your agency. Select one of them to view their stats. So the payload is only 40 kilograms. An upper stage must be able to carry the payload, which means its payload capacity must be at least equal to the payload's mass. Also, its max destination must be at least equal to the mission's destination. 
Another vital stat is the upper stage's mass. This will determine the size of the booster required to carry it. When designing vehicles, you commonly use parts you haven't researched yet. This can be the best way to design the perfect vehicle for the mission and won't prevent you selecting the vehicle. However, you'll need to research the required parts before construction before construction can be started. Can be started. Excuse me. For most missions, a good rule is to select an upper stage with a payload capacity close to the payload's mass in order to save on build cost and build time. However, there will be some circumstances when larger parts are better suited. When you're happy with your choice, press Select Part. So that has exactly 40 kilograms. It's got the right range. I think we're going with that. And this is a cheaper one. What's that got? See, that's 500k. It's not researched yet. I see, that's what this little icon is. Okay, so definitely this one then. Booster. Here you'll find all your currently available boosters. Further boosters and upper stages will be added as you reach new eras. Select any booster to view its stats. So it's got 400k capacity. Uh, the, the main requirement of a booster is that it's able to carry the upper stage. This means that its lift capacity must be at least equal to the mass of the upper stage. I love this. It's so clever. Another important booster stat is the required launch pad. This will determine the size of the launch pad needed to launch the vehicle. Boosters and upper stages will gain an experience level every time they're used in a launch, up to a maximum of five. Each level gain provides an increase to reliability for that part. Different parts gain different amounts of launch reliability per level. Parts that start with a low reliability but gain a lot of reliability points per level may be a good investment if you're willing to risk a few uncertain early launches. To view more info about parts level, hover the cursor over its level text. Interesting. So that's already got 65% reliability. That's also got 65% reliability with the added bonus of 5% reliability per level. So this is the Algol that we desperately... What I'm thinking is, even though it's a thousand kilograms, which is way more than we need, we do need this to get to the moon. Oh no. That's only suitable for Earth orbit. Have I researched the wrong thruster? I have, haven't I? Right, well in that case... In that case, we'll go for the cheapest. Which one's the cheapest? That one, but not by much. Blast. I've totally researched the wrong piece there. You can check whether your selected upper stage and booster combination is valid for the mission here. If it's not, try different combinations until you find one that works. When you have a valid design that you're happy with, select Confirm. Three months. Your first milestone challenge is now available. These are optional goals for your agency that involve completing certain milestones in return for substantial rewards. To view the current milestone challenge, select Earth or any planetary body to access the mission, select Screen. So I'm going for this. What we need is this. I assume. Max distance, moon. Now maybe we haven't built the wrong thing. So maybe we should have gone with the out goal. I assume this is just to get us off the floor. And it's this one that goes to the moon. 
So this was a good purchase. It's a bit heavier. But I think it's going to work out. It's whether or not this booster is going to be enough. We'll have to wait and see. Lunar Orbit Research Complete Achieving Lunar Orbit is a challenging endeavour for any space agency, requiring a payload capable of not only reaching the moon, but also the careful course corrections to maintain orbit around it. Getting exciting now, huh? Right, so I'm thinking... So these are all medium-sized launch pads. These are the big, big, big rockets. Launch reliability 55, but 6,500 kilograms. This is 6.6 thousand, 6,600 kilograms, but 80% launch reliability. This is almost guaranteed. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand. It's got to be this one, the Atlas. It's just got so much more power for not much more money. There she is. Nice. Five percent payload reliability increase. This is almost, almost, touch wood, certain to be a success. Suboptimal. Ah, oh, look, they're all launching in June. That's optimal. This is suboptimal. We're going to lose 20% launch reliability penalty, which will take it down to 53%. But we will be first. That is a big gamble, isn't it? Let's try it. We've got something bigger lined up already. This is either going to be brilliant or a total disaster. A little over 50-50. That's pretty scary stuff. Come on. Be good to me. There, baby. Nice. And very positive. Brilliant. Here we go. New task. Achieve Earth Orbit. Collect two comms and two data mission resources. During mission tasks, you'll need to issue commands to the payload in order to achieve the task objective. The current task objective is shown here. To successfully complete the task, you'll need to generate the required resources. Resources are generated via payload commands. Each command requires a specific input 
in order to generate an output of resources. You'll only have a limited amount of comms per turn, so choose each wisely. This is the planning phase of the turn, so you can freely undo and reselect commands as you wish. Try different combinations to generate the resources you require. When you're happy with your selected commands, select Confirm Commands to continue. Each command will be attempted by the payload in the order they were selected, with a chance of error based on the payload's reliability. Wow. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. Right. So, we. this is what we can spend, and this is what we need. So, we've got four power to spend. If I spend one power, we'll get potentially two uh, comms values back, which is great. And I think we need to start with that because we're going to get two comms and then we can spend one power and one comms to get that, we should be good. So if we do that first, and then that, that's our two moves, and we should end up with one power and three uh, of these. Yeah. If everything goes well. Four turns remain. Oh, we've got loads of turns. Whoa. Only just, though. Scraped through. Successfully completed. Fantastic. That's two points in the bag. Oh, dear. That's not so good. An electrical malfunction in the camera has resulted in reduced data generation. This command's output will be reduced by one of those, unless you spend an extra power unit to resist the event. I don't really need to. Two's enough. And now we just need to do this again. A turn is completed each time all of your previously selected commands have been attempted. Make sure you complete the task objective before the turn runs out. Recharge power. Recharge power can be selected instead of a normal command to generate extra power. Power is used as an input for commands or to resist errors that occur when the payload attempts commands. Keeping some spare power is a good precaution against unexpected issues. I don't think... We need to worry about that so much. So we're just going to run power. And then let's... What's the point in recharging power? Do we get more than one back? Well, it looks like we do. Okay, well, that's worth doing then. Let's try. Oh, that's very bad. I probably should have kept one power uh, aside. Oh, it looks like we have got two powers, so we can resist. It'll only be reduced by one anyway, so we don't even need to spend extra power. So I can just accept that defeat, that loss. Take the one we need. Mission is completed. Every mission task will have a bonus objective. Meeting these requirements before your turn runs out will be challenging, but doing so will result in a substantial rewards boost. Damn, I didn't see that. Hang on, I'm confused. Do we need an additional three of each, or do we just need an extra one of each? We have two turns remaining. I'm going to go for the atmospheric sampling. One power one of these to get back three of these and then I'm going to use two of those to try and gain these back I think that's going to work let's try it 
So potentially we'd have three, three, and we'll have achieved the 50% bonus reward. Let's have a go. We've not been very lucky, so... We don't need navigation points, though, do we? So instead, let's do that. Well, that was nice. That's a full return. Atmospheric sampling successfully completed. That's all the points we need. If this goes well... Oh dear, it didn't go well. Uh, we don't have any power. Terrestrial weather patterns have caused a degradation in the signal. This command command's output will be reduced by one. You haven't got enough to resist it. How many we were going to get back? Two, so we're safe. Okay, I had thought about it, momentarily forgot, and panicked. So this is the last turn. And we need... We need one more of these. But we have no power. So I hadn't thought about it at all. I put myself back at two levels. Blast. I could do this. And that would be enough. Nice. No matter what happens now, we're good. Total success. Brilliant. Milestone achieved. Artificial satellite. Nice. Big bonus for being the first to do it as well. With your artificial satellite safely in orbit, you've achieved a major milestone for your agency and opened the door to launching more complex payloads, perhaps even those that could carry humans into space. For such formidable challenges, it's crucial that your mission staff receive the right training. This can be of great benefit to a mission, increasing key stats such as launch reliability, payload reliability, or the mission's science rewards. Constructing the appropriate buildings in your base will unlock new avenues of training. Research lab, rocket test pad and the spacecraft assembly facility each unlock certain types of training. Choose one of these to research and build. Which though? I'm going to wrap this episode up there guys, but join me again for another one if you want to see more of this. I think it's fantastic. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.